Good afternoon, everyone. It's Tannis with H and H Sign Supply, doing my weekly live every Thursday, three o'clock central. I go live to discuss new products, and um, to show you different projects that you can use with the items that we sell. So, if you tuned in last week, you saw uh, that I used the Artist Free Sublimation Markers, and my presentation didn't go over as planned because I had a connection issue with my laptop and my Silhouette Cameo. I figured that out towards the end of the video and so I kind of showed you everything backwards. And so I felt really bad about that and I kind of stumbled through it. So this week I'm going to show you um, how to draw on paper with your Cameo using these markers and then we are going to sublimate or excuse me heat press the design on a polyester pillow we're then going to go on top of that with the new caesar sparkle that was just released um but we are also so this is all of my designs together but let me pull one off here caesar just released 14 new colors of caesar sparkle this is the sparkle it's there you go you can you can see that um it's like a glitter it's really thin the heat setting is the same as easy weed and i think i'm really gonna like it so we're gonna do the same design um, one on polyester with sublimation markers and this um, Caesar sparkle with it. And we're going to do another, the same design, but only with the sparkle. So, first off, I am, I already have my design. I went ahead and drew that and colored it in because it was quite extensive. And it is a sunflower. And what I did on this one, I used, uh, I, I drew it all in with the black outline. And then I used yellow to color it all in. But then I went back with uh, orange and kind of gave it some definition. And so we're going to see what happens when we take the yellow marker and put the orange marker on top and see what kind of result we have. I didn't do that last week. Um, so this week I'm really curious to see what happens. So, um, I'm going to show you how to load those markers again. So, this is going to be a kind of a refresher, but for anyone that didn't tune in last week, it's going to be new information. So, these markers we sell on our site. This is the 10 pack of the basic colors. Um, these are a chiseled edge. So, they're they're not so great for drawing your outlines, but they are great for coloring in. And that is why we also sell the six pack of black. So these black markers, you get two fine point, two round, and two chisel points. What I'm using is the fine point. Let me find it here. The fine point. And I don't know how many people have ever drawn with a Cameo. I actually had not drawn on paper with a Cameo until last week. Um, the helper is here. Yay! Jamie finally arrived. I was wondering when he was going to help me. Internet went out for a minute. So sorry. Um, I had terrible computer issues in my office today and I was starting to panic. So I totally get it. Um, oh, so I had never really drawn on paper with my Cameo and it's pretty amazing that it can do that. I mean, I know a lot of people use it to make cards and paper crafts and stuff, but I just never really had the need to do that. And so you can't just set your pen inside your blade, like where your blade holder is, um, because it wobbles around and it, and it makes a terrible mess. Something kind of like this. This is what your design would look like. And so with a new Cameo, you know, the, the blade has uh, a magnet on the back. These blades are a lot different. It's got that magnet on the back that tells your software what kind of blade is in there. And it makes things a lot easier, but yet it can complicate things, I believe. So, um, with that being said, you're, if you're using 
a two or three cameo, then all you need is the pin holder set. If you're using the four, your four would have came with these little doohickeys. Um, and so what these are for is to put other tools in to allow you to use older tools such as this pin set that I've had on my shelf for a long time that was intended for like a two or three. So these are like little adapters that allow you to use those older tools um, because these tools don't have that magnet on the back and if the magnet's not on there then it's it's not going to recognize it and it's, it's not going to work. So this pin set, let me pull my camera down a little bit so you guys can see what I'm doing. So this pin set or pin holder comes with this here and you're gonna have a small medium and large and let me see what those are called because I, I got my own name for them okay so these little things here are called a colette and this white thing is called a pin shaft and these these colettes screw into the pin shaft like that so you're gonna Take your pen, we'll back up a little bit. This Colette has a little, little stopper on it. And I'll show you what that's for, and it's really important. Last week, I managed to get by without using it, but this week, I realized really quick how important it is to actually use that thing. So you're gonna take your, your pen, I'm using the fine point, and um, you want to choose the colette that slides on there easily. In my case, it's the gray one, which is the large. It can slide all the way up that pin. And you're gonna take your colette and you're going to insert it. Now, this end cap is there so you know how far to stop your pin. Somehow last week, I don't know how I did it, but I inserted that pin all the way through until it stopped and it worked fine. But this week when I was trying to do this design, it was inserted too far and that's how I ended up with these two scribble messes. So what happened was as your pin or your blade goes across, that blade holder lifts it up until it goes to the next point to draw or to cut. My pin was extended too far and it wasn't lifting it up, it was just dragging it across the paper. So that's when I went back and I was like, okay, this thing is here for a reason. Um, stop jumping ahead of yourself and thinking you know exactly what you're doing because you really don't. So. What you want to do with your pen is you want to put it in this pen shaft until it stops. Don't push on it because then it's going to um, get ink at the bottom of it, but it's also going to uh, possibly damage the, the felt of your, of your pen or your marker. These are markers, not pens. And when you do that, this colette here, you want to slide it down. So what you want to do is you want to slide it in until the marker hits that colette. Maybe. Okay. And then you want to slide this, well, fooey. So you're gonna hit, okay. Then you're gonna slide this down and it screws on. That Colette screws into that pin mark or that um, pin shaft. Then you want to remove this white end cap, and that should be the right depth of the tip of your pen. So, like I said, you can't just set this in your pen holder, it'll wobble around, and then your uh, drawing will be scribbly like what I showed you. So this here, it's just plastic and it clips and you're going to set the pin holder inside 
and clip it. It's only gonna go in there one way, so there's no really wrong way of doing it. And now that it's in there, it's pretty, pretty um, tight in there. And I'm gonna flip my screen so that you can see how I am putting this into the Cameo. Let me get some of this nonsense out of my way. Okay. All right, so you're just gonna set it in like you would a um, your blade. And these two little clips here should click into it. And that's gonna hold it st steady. Now I'm going to um, load my paper. So you want to do that like you would just regular vinyl. Let me see here. I'm going to turn this just a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm doing. So in my experience of cutting lots of vinyl with my Cameo, sometimes I use a cutting mat and sometimes I don't. If I'm cutting regular outdoor vinyl, I don't use a cutting mat. If I'm cutting heat transfer, I use a cutting mat. But if I have a new cutting mat, I notice that a lot of times it will peel that some of that paper backing um, whenever you remove it from the mat. So like you can kind of see right here that's some paper backing from probably Oracal. So whenever you're working with paper I believe it is probably best to pull out those old cutting mats that aren't very sticky because you don't want them to tear the paper. So you're just gonna put it on like you would vinyl and you're gonna load it like you would vinyl. Hi, Regina. Hi, Fonda. Thank you for joining me today. I do appreciate it. Uh, let me see if I can get my laptop woke up here. So, of course, it appears that I'm having connection issues again because my laptop is asleep or something. There we go. I tell you, technology is not on my side these days. I don't know what it is. Okay, I guess I just had to talk bad about it. I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna take this out because it's not detecting the, the pin. Okay, so I'm gonna send this to my Cameo. It is ready to draw. Whenever you're selecting um, your media, your material, you wanna just use regular copy paper. 
Your action is going to be sketch and your tool is going to be pen. And I'm going to send it and cross my fingers. Okay guys, so I hope you can hear me over the cameo. It says it's like another minute and 30 seconds, so we got a little bit of time until it's finished. And like I said, I already colored it in. Um, but I would like for you to see the finished product because, or the finished drawing, because it is really neat. Uh, so it's only another minute and 15 seconds. So you guys let me know if you have tried this, if you watched my video last week, if you are into sublimation, if you've ever used the markers, I'm really curious to know if this is something new uh, for you guys or if, if you would like to try it. Um, I, I think it's, it's so neat. The first thing that comes to my mind is this would be great for a gift for a grandparent or an aunt or a teacher to where your kid could draw something for them and you could put it on a piece of fabric or you know a keychain or a koozie as long as the blank is will accept sublimation it's a sublimation blank then you can use these markers with it it's only got like 20 seconds left is what the cameo is showing or the software is showing It looks like it is finished. Okay. So look how look how that turned out. I mean, it looks really, really great. So then all you would do is take your markers. I'm gonna remove it from the cutting mat. And that, this one that I've already um, colored in, it took, it took me a little bit of time because I wanted to get extra creative. But you would just take your markers, you would choose your color. So, one good thing about the having these chisel edges is you can you can start and the paper's a little bit curly because it come up off that sticky, but it does flatten out. Like this one was curly too when I first removed it, but it's flattened out pretty well. So one good thing about the chisels chisel edge on these markers is you can use the fine edge to kind of go the fine tip to kind of go around the edges. But if you really wanted to color something in fast, let me make sure you guys can see. Okay. Um, you can do that. So, you know, and sometimes you want to be, make it really neat and sometimes you don't, you want to kind of make it look distressed. So that's the joy of, of this is you can make it however you want. So that's what you do. You would just color that in and, um, when you're finished, you would press it on. So we're going to press it on now. So I'm using a polyester pillow. These are 18 by 18. I do sell those in my showroom in Sturgis and in Evansville. And you can also buy those if you're not local and you don't shop at our stores. You can buy those. We don't sell them on our website, but um, you can buy them at craftchameleon.com. 
They have tons of sublimation blanks and tons of other blanks. So whenever you're pressing soft goods for these markers, you want your heat press at 360 degrees and you're going to press it for 60 seconds. But just like any heat transfer, you want to pre-press your garment. A um, couple of reasons, you want to get moisture out and you also don't want wrinkles. You want to have a good smooth press, so you want to press it for just a few seconds to get those wrinkles and the moisture out. Okay, so last week um, I told you about the parchment paper. And actually, I think mine fell on the floor, so let me get that real quick. So you want to use, whatever you're working with these uh, markers or any kind of sublimation, it could bleed through to your uh, cover sheet. So that's why you wouldn't want to use Teflon. Um, and I'll show you that. But I want to, I don't want the color to bleed through to, um, to my heat press. So I'm going to use a couple of different pieces. First, I'm going to put a piece inside. Like, I don't want it to bleed through to the back, and I don't think it will, but I just want to be extra cautious. So I'm going to try, and I probably should have measured this before I said I was going to put it in there, but I'm going to try to put it inside my pillow. And also, um, that's going to protect it from bleeding through to the back side. And I'm going to use heat tape to tape my design down. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on top here. I see where it needs to be. I don't want it to be crooked. Okay, so you want to use heat tape, um, heat resistant tape, because you don't want your design moving around and you want to get a clean um, press. You, you don't want your design moving around so um, it's smeary or anything like that. I'm going to tape it. I'm going to put my parchment paper on top. And remember, it is um, 360 degrees for 60 seconds. Here goes nothing. All right, see if I have any questions. Um, Fonda said she's used sublimation. It is pretty popular. Um, it, it's just, uh, it, it gives a different look. It allows you to do full color. And um, I really I really like these markers. We don't really do a lot with sublimation. We would like to learn more about it. But these markers, I'm really, really loving. So we got 20, 20 seconds left. Okay. 
Can you see how you can see the design? It came through that paper onto the parchment paper. Um, that's one reason why you would want to use the parchment and not your Teflon because once you put it on your Teflon, it's going to um, be on there forever. So here's the reveal. Look how cute that is. That looks so good. Okay, so I'm going to come on top with the Caesar Sparkle. It does give you that glitterly look, glitter look without the roughness of the traditional Caesar glitter. Um, it is kind of flexible or kind of stretchy. this one is not 360. I need to back my temperature up before I make a big boo-boo. It's actually 305. Sorry, I should have done that right off the bat. Hopefully it will cool off quickly. And it's for 10 to, uh, 10 to 15 seconds. remove this so it's not getting heat from that sorry it shouldn't take real long for that to cool off but unfortunately um, I don't have two heat presses and we have to kind of um, work with what we have but it really shouldn't take too long for that to cool down yeah it's starting to cool down now so I'm gonna flip my screen while that is cooling down Okay, so Fonda wants to know about the glitter vinyl. So Caesar just released this week. Um, it's called Caesar Sparkle, and it is a glitter, glittery film. Um, the Caesar glitter is rough, and it's at like 320 degrees. You cannot layer it, and that's one great thing about this Caesar Sparkle is it. You can layer it. You can put it on top of each other or you know on top and um it cuts and weeds and heat applies the same as a caesar easy weed so 305 for 10 to 15 seconds whenever i was cutting it it is um kind of stretchy so it it, it go it will go on well with your um t-shirts but also it's soft so it's thin and it's soft to the touch and i think it's going to be a huge hit now a long time ago when we first started selling Caesar, they had a product called Video Flex Glitter. And it was basically this type of, of HTV. And they discontinued it and they brought in the actual glitter line, but they've brought this back. And it's very similar to what they just launched a few months ago or several months ago, really, of the Twinkle. But the Twinkle has more, um, it reflects. So like a reflective vinyl, it reflects in the light. This does not. It just has your color. Like your, um, let me get one off here. Okay, so that's got a huge glare. This one here is the yellow, and I don't, I don't have the names memorized yet. I think it's sunset yellow. But... It's a really nice color and it does have, the flakes are more of a silvery color. So if you're wanting to put something on a, a child's garment or you just really don't like that roughness of the regular Caesar glitter, then this would be the product you would want to use. Um, it is on our site, it is ready to be bought. Uh, quantity discounts, it starts at $3.75 a sheet. Um, it is sold in continuous footage, but if you wanted to get just one 
uh, you could for 375 it would be a 12 by 12 the more you buy the less it is perfect on a continuous color I'm really excited about it I wasn't um, excited until I used it or I cut it today and you guys will see what it looks like after I apply it and I think it's um, I think it's gonna be really popular so there's tons of new products that I wanted to share today. So last week we did the sublimation markers and my video wasn't like I wanted it. So I said I would do it again. But then the sparkle um, landed this week and was announced. And I was like, well, I really don't want to miss out on that. So I wanted to incorporate that. Um, but there's two new Caesar glitter colors, Lagoon and Dark Walnut. And they look great. Lagoon is absolutely beautiful. I hope that I can show that to you in a video really soon. Also, one other thing is we have two new patterns that will be hitting the site probably in the next couple of days. Uh, one is a camo, like my shirt, this classic, we call it classic camo. Uh, and then another one is a rainbow leopard. And... Uh, we hopefully I can show you guys that soon. I just kind of ran out of time and let the the day get get past me. Um, what else? Oh, if you've ever used the Twinkle, um, I do need to show you guys that sometime. But if you've ever used the Twinkle, they just came out with two new colors. So orange and purple have been added to the Twinkle line. Um, so I got just a few more degrees to go on the heat press. I'm trying to cool it down. The sublimation markers are 360. 360 degrees for 60 seconds on the press whereas this Caesar Twinkle is 305 so I didn't want to press it at 360 and uh, cause any kind of issues with it so these this pillow that I'm using is a polyester pillow um, if you're not very familiar with sublimation uh, it, it works with polyester it can work with cotton poly blends but the more polyester, the better. So if you had like a 80-20, like 80% polyester and 20% cotton, you're still gonna get a press with that, but your colors are gonna be more washed out. So the higher the percentage of polyester, the more vibrant your um, garments are gonna be. And I think that's why a lot of times with sublimation, like if you see a sublimation shirt, that's why they look washed out is because that shirt isn't 100% polyester, um, which that look still looks good because you know that vintage thing is is really popular. Uh, I don't know much about sublimation. I need to learn. I want to learn. Uh, the other pillow that we're going to use is cotton. So we're doing two white pillows, but the one I'm using just all sparkle is cotton. And the other one is, or cotton canvas, and the other one is just straight polyester. And um, these, like I said, you can buy these on our, in our stores in Sturgis and Evansville, or you can get them at craftchameleon.com. Hi, Ashley and Allison from Art Esprit. Um, thank you for joining us. Sorry that you missed it, but I think you're going to really love the outcome. So while I'm waiting, I just have a few more degrees. I'll catch uh, Artist Brie up. Thank you for joining us. I'll catch you guys up. Um, I did this design. And on this pillow. And what I did was I colored it in with yellow. But then I went over... Um, with orange to kind of make it look more realistic more like a sunflower and it looks great and i'm gonna add the caesar sparkle okay so i'm at 305 i'm going to go ahead and get you get my screen flipped here you guys probably don't really want to see it up close of me but there you go okay so I'm gonna put my pillow back and I put parchment paper for anyone that's just now joining me I put parchment paper between inside the pillow so we didn't have any uh, dye uh, migration is what they call it or any bleeding of the marker colors 
I'm gonna see if you guys can see that. Go up a little, scoot up a little bit more. There. I'm gonna lay this inside. Make sure I have no white edges showing here. Okay, so on this one, because my clear mylar is covering uh, this, wow. the marker design, I am going to use my Teflon sheet. If my clear mylar was not covering the sublimation or the marker design, you would not want to use your Teflon sheet because you would not want that ink to transfer. So I'm going to cover it in this. Since it's only one color or one um, yellow yeah, color on this design, I'm going to press it for uh, 15 seconds. And it is um, medium pressure and it's a hotter coat peel. Think you can here doesn't that look so cute it is a hot peel is it a hot peel yes um fonda you can peel it hot or cold i kind of peeled it um warm i guess you would say but i love how this turned out um let me get it a little bit closer so you can see the flake. Um, you can see on that B right there, I kind of, there's a, a, a white gap. I kind of didn't get it lined up correctly, but also a lot of times it will shrink once you press it, but it doesn't matter. It still looks so good. So there's the flake in the sparkle. Uh, now we're going to press the same design in a cotton pillow. So we want to pre-press, let me get my screen going there. Okay. We're going to pre-press to get any moisture and wrinkles out. I don't know where you are today. We're in Western Kentucky and it is hotter than blue blazes out there. It is so humid. So if it's humid outside, it's probably any fabrics or carrying moisture. You want to press that for a few seconds and get all that moisture and wrinkles out. So, although the sparkle can be layered, I wanted to do the inlay look. For one, that's how the design was done, so I could do it with the markers, and I didn't want to redesign it. So, I'm just going to, um, I'm going to start with the black, because that is the whole design, and then just the, the orange and the yellow kind of inlays. seconds anytime you're pressing more than one color on a shirt at the same time you don't want to do each color the full length of time because that first layer is going to get way too much heat so you only want to press each color for you know three seconds or so just long enough for it to adhere and then on your last press you're going to do the full time so we're going to do for like 
take three seconds. And then I'm gonna use, I guess I'll just do the orange because that's what I grabbed. Your, your fabric shrinks, therefore your, um, your vinyl or your HTV could shrink a little bit. So this one I'm going to press for like three seconds. So the color, um, the black color is called Midnight Black, and the orange, I think, is Sunset Orange. The yellow, I'm not sure what it's called, but it's something yellow. There's only one orange, one yellow. There's a couple of blues. There's a couple of pinks. There's a green and red. There's 14 colors, so, I mean, pretty good color selection with this sparkle, and I'm sure they'll be adding more. So on this one, I'm going to do the full 15 seconds, or like 10 to 15 seconds. I might go to like 13 seconds. Okay, Caesar, their heat instructions are 305 for 10 to 15 seconds, hot or cold peel. And since this is not going to be um, washed probably because it's just going in my showroom, then I could get by with probably less heat. But if it's gonna be, you know, you're gonna wash it, especially if it's a shirt, you wanna be sure that you press it the right pressure and the right temperature for sure. Right temperature, right pressure, and right amount of time. Okay, this turned out really cute too. I can't really decide which one I like the best. Okay. I'm gonna flip my screen around so I can see everyone's comments. Okay, I'm really excited about this. I think these turned out way better than I even thought that they would, way better. This is the sublimation one with the sublimation markers and this is what my paper looked like, of course, Remember, I forgot to tell you guys this, whenever you're drawing, you wanna do it in reverse image. So if you have your kid draw something on paper and they write letters, it's gonna be backwards because you wanna put the marker side down. So keep that in mind. Um, but on this, so I reversed the image like I would heat transfer and then I drew it, actually that's upside down. So this is what I started with. And um, you can pre-draw these uh, there's no amount of time before you have to press them and you can pre you can repress this but the second press may not be as vibrant on the colors so you can see how muted those colors are but look how vibrant they are on this so this is the one with the sublimation markers and the Caesar sparkle on top the exact same design with just the brand new Caesar Sparkle here. I can't decide which one I like. Which one do you guys like? Which one is your favorite? I know what Ashley at Artist Free is gonna say, but what do you guys think? You like this one with the sparkle? It's kind of hard to see because, you know, I wanna get it up close, but then it's kind of got a glare on it. Or do you like this one with the with the markers. Give me your opinion, I wanna know. Tabitha says, those are so cute. I believe they turned out really great. I'm, I'm really excited about it. 
All right, tell me what you think. Which one is your favorite? Um, I still don't know what I'm gonna do for my live next week. I would love for someone to give me a suggestion. Artist Bree says, yes, I might be biased. I can't decide which one I like either. I, I think they both look great. The markers is brighter, yes. Um, it is much brighter, but it's, you know, you gotta think it is a different medium there. This one here is, is a little more dull. The color is a little more dull. Um, it does have that shiny, but of course, you know, you're seeing the, um, the reflection of the lights there. All right, I wish I could, I'm gonna post a picture of these side by side in a little bit. Um, yes, it is, Jamie says, how vibrant, it's amazing how vibrant those colors turn out. So when I first used those markers, I thought, this is not very pretty. Like, it, like these colors aren't very pretty. But once you apply that heat, that's when they come to life and they become so vibrant. And um, so don't underestimate what the, what the color is when you're coloring because it will um, come alive. So, and also the, the more polyester your blank, the, the more vibrant your colors are gonna be. Your detail made it pop. Yes, I was nervous about this black because it looks of course it looks black it's called midnight black but when you get it up close it's more of a a dark gray or a charcoal because it does have that silver flake in it um so i was nervous about what it would look like with this design i bought this design on the silhouette store but i made modifications to it so um so that i could so I could use it in, in this way. And I was just really nervous on, on that color selection, but I love it. So um, thank you for joining me today and thank you for the support. Let us know the products that you would like for me to do a video on. I'm gonna sign off. If no one has anything else, I'm not gonna just sit here and, and keep talking. I love to talk. Uh, my husband and son always tell me I talk too much. If I go out in public and I see someone, they know that it's going to be at least 10 minutes because I'll just keep talking and talking. So, anything else real quick? Thank you guys. Thank you for chiming in. Thank you to Fonda. Let's see, we had Fonda, Regina, uh, Artist Bree, Tabitha, Kathy, Chantel, thank you all for chiming in today. One quick thing, last week, whenever I did the face mask with the markers, I needed sublim or I needed a parchment paper, and I forgot that at home, and I said, oh, I'll just go into town and I'll get some, it won't be any big deal. And we live in a, or our office is in a super small town, and we have a Dollar General, a Family Dollar, and we have a grocery store. Out of all three of those, no one had parchment paper, and I was starting to be in a panic. I go to my mother-in-law's house. She's out of town. I go rummaging through her kitchen. She doesn't have any. The only thing I'm finding at this point is wax paper, and I know that's not gonna work. So I'm like, what am I gonna do? So I come back to work, and I, I told Brittany, I was like, can you call some of your aunts to see if they have any parchment paper. And thank you, Cheryl Lanham, for getting me that parchment paper because you saved my life last week. I did not wanna have to drive all the way home and all the way back, I didn't have time for that. So I forgot to thank uh, Cheryl last week. And um, so I'm giving her a shout out now. Okay guys, sorry, I lost connection and I had to move. So I'm gonna sign off. Jessica says I should've went to her house. Yes, I should have, um, but I just, I wasn't even thinking. Um, thank you for watching today. We supply, you create.